Well, first thing is to maintain a healthy weight. We know that obesity is associated with an increased risk of colon cancer. So eating a healthy diet full of fruits, green leafy vegetables, whole grains, fiber, reducing your intake of processed meats like bacon, hot dogs, lunch meat. Those smoked meats have a high amount of nitrates in them. And consuming them, even in moderation, we know that is increasing your risk of colon cancer by about 18%. Reducing your alcohol intake to drinking in moderation, which is no more than two drinks per day for men or one drink per day for women. Exercising regularly. If you're smoking, make every effort to quit. And if you're age 50 or older and you haven't had a screening colonoscopy, now's the time. If you are younger than 50 or any age with any of the following alarm symptoms, you should have a screening colonoscopy. And by alarm symptoms, I mean abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting that's persisting, cramping, a change in your bowel habits, constipated, diarrhea, a change in the consistency or the shape of your stools, red blood in your stools, or black, tarry colored stools, or you're losing weight that you can't explain. All of those symptoms should prompt you to talk to your physician about having a screening colonoscopy set up in the hopes of preventing colon cancer. If you have no family history of colon cancer and no symptoms, the current guidelines are that we start screening colonoscopies at age 50 or age 45 if you're African American. Again, regardless of what age you are, with any alarm symptoms, you should be getting a screening colonoscopy. If you have a first degree relative, mother, father, brother, sister, or child with colon cancer, we recommend that you get your first screening colonoscopy 10 years sooner than the age that they were diagnosed with colon cancer. Having a first degree relative with colon cancer increases your risk of getting it by three to four times. If you have ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, which are inflammatory conditions of the bowel, you should be getting colonoscopies on a regular basis. On average, the standard colonoscopy takes about 30 minutes. You are completely asleep for your colonoscopy and you will not feel the procedure being done. You will need a driver to drive you home from the procedure. You cannot drive home or walk home from the procedure uh, since it is done under anesthesia. Well, the day before your colonoscopy is your prep day where you will be drinking a laxative solution to get the colon all cleaned out so that we can actually see when we get in there on the day of your colonoscopy. And the day of your prep is actually the most important part of the patient responsibilities. We ask that when you get up that morning to start your prep day, that you begin drinking clear liquids and you continue drinking clears throughout the day and throughout the entire prep process. Number one, to remain hydrated, and number two, to help flush the bowel. Examples of clear liquids are water, tea, coffee, as long as you're not putting creamer in it, uh, soda or carbonated beverages, sports drinks, electrolyte beverages, soups and clear broths, gelatin, hard candies, popsicles, sorbets, those are all allowed and encouraged. Things that we wouldn't want you to eat on the day of your prep would be solid foods, meats, vegetables, pastas, seeds, nuts, and anything red. You don't want to take the chance of jeopardizing a good clean out uh, or a safe prep. One of the saddest statements that my patients make to me is, well, I don't have any problems down there, so I don't need a colonoscopy. Thanks, doc, but no thanks. And the number one symptom of colon cancer is no symptom at all. So colon cancer starts in a small polyp. They're tiny growths that grow on the inside of the colon wall, and stool can pass right over those polyps without causing you any pain or symptoms. Not having a colonoscopy allows those polyps to continue to grow larger, develop worrisome characteristics, and invade the colon wall. A colonoscopy allows us to go in and remove those small polyps before they turn into cancerous polyps or to catch them at an early stage. A colonoscopy can prevent colon cancer and save your life. I tell my patients all the time, you get the oil changed in your car, you keep up with routine maintenance and inspections of your vehicles, 
to extend the life of your vehicles and to ensure that they're running safely and smoothly. And here's an opportunity for you to do that with your body and with your health. You have to be proactive with your health and protective of your health. If you're embarrassed, that's understandable, but I ask you to put your embarrassment aside. The physicians that are doing your colonoscopy chose this field. They're professionals who are dedicated to digestive health, dedicated to a safe, comfortable patient procedure, and dedicated to colon cancer prevention. Embarrassment can't kill you. Colon cancer can get tested. We want you to know that colon cancer is preventable, beatable, and treatable. And for that reason, UPMC Susquehanna is committed to the 80 by 2018 pledge. And what that is is an initiative across the United States where we are making every effort to increase our colon cancer screening rates of our 50 plus population to 80% by the year 2018. So if you are 50 years old or older and you have not had a colonoscopy, or regardless of your age, <clears throat> you have any of those alarm symptoms that I mentioned, I encourage you to talk to your primary care physician or to give us a call at the Digestive Disease Center and set up an appointment to come in and talk to us about doing a colonoscopy.